think it's super important to understand, to both identify and understand your individual strengths and weaknesses as a business owner. Because once you understand your strengths, it's easy to play to them and make decisions that enable those strengths to shine. Conversely, once you understand your weaknesses, it's easy to understand where your blind spots are and it enables you to make decisions about most often the who that can fill in the blind spots and make up for your own deficiencies. So when I took on this like self-evaluation of understanding who I am as an individual and looking at both my individual strengths and my individual weaknesses, there were some things that kind of came to the top, right? So first is I'm a very strategic thinker. Um, one of the best examples that I saw of this and when I was really able to, like it dawned on me, this epiphany, was during COVID when I um, had a chance to watch The Queen's Gambit. I don't watch a ton of TV, so it was a little bit of a, a rare thing that I sat down to binge something. But it was super impactful to me when the main chess player, she would stare up at the ceiling and the images of the whole chessboard would be on the ceiling and in her head, she could see each piece moving across the chessboard in the sky. And not only was she envisioning her moves, but that invisible chessboard had the moves of her opponents as well. And over the past couple of years, I've really been able to identify within myself that I kind of operate the same way in that I can understand the strategy and think about how that strategy is going to impact the people here, the market conditions, but conversely, how market conditions and external sources can impact that strategy that we're putting into place. I think the next huge strength is my ability to take some calculated risk with that strategy. I'm not afraid to make mistakes anymore. I think early on in my career, mistakes were kind of scary, but I've realized that I actually learn the most from those mistakes and that sometimes you just need to make the mistake. Um, and then finally is the ability to make really quick decisions. Um, I think one of the things that I see business owners fall into more often than they should is overanalyzing things and letting that strategy and the thought of what could go wrong play out a little bit too long in their minds before they take action. And unfortunately, sometimes you miss an opportunity by taking too long. Weaknesses, got a bunch of those too. Um, and I think one of them is, you know, my biggest one is my, actually my ability to remain organized and you know hiring an assistant and somebody who can really help me master all of the different things that go into my day and my time and just being able to keep everything straight has been one of the biggest things that I've been able to do for myself. Um, secondarily, I think sometimes I might take a few too many risks, right? And so it's also, it's a strength, but it's also a weakness. And so it's been really key for me to have people within the company and outside the company that I can bounce ideas off of and talk through whether, whether it's a risk worth taking. The process of kind of identifying those strengths and weaknesses it, you know, it was a longer process than I'd care to admit. I think some of it had come from working with coaches and mentors who've been able to see in, see in me things that I don't necessarily see in myself. For instance, um, there was a long time where I actually thought I was a pretty easygoing human being. Um, and it wasn't until about 2018 when I had this epiphany that I'm actually not very easygoing. Um, and the epiphany was brought on by somebody else. So A, working with other people who have the ability to see things from a different perspective has helped me identify them. B, um, I think looking at where do I have successes and where do I have wins? And when somebody can stop to really step back, even you know at the end of a year and assess in their own business, what went well and what didn't, I'm gonna bet that most people are gonna see a theme, right? Is there a theme of things that happened really well in their business and or a theme of things where they were like, shit, that didn't go as I planned or um, it didn't go as well as it could have or as well as it should have. And I think that often looking at that from a 30 foot view of the whole picture put together can really help you identify your own individual strengths and weaknesses.
once you understand what your weaknesses are, one of the fastest ways to catapult yourself into the next level of success is to find the people who offset that weakness. Um, and I think it's important to understand that early on in your business, even if it is a weakness, sometimes you just have to find the way to adapt, right? When you don't have the budget to be able to make a hire to solve that problem, often it means finding the skills to enable yourself to do it just slightly better than what you had been doing it on your own. But as you develop the budget and the ability to hire folks, it becomes looking a, a process of looking at what's on your day to day and what are the things that somebody else can just do 10 times better or 10 times more efficiently or 10 times more effectively than what you're able to do it? For me, stepping back as I look back at the history of the company, hiring an assistant to help me stay organized was hands down the number one thing. Once we had able, been able to build up enough revenues and enough profits to make the next hire in that, it was looking at somebody who could run the sales team. Um, because while I love the lead gen and the strategy and that kind of stuff, I, I didn't love training and I am not as passionate about sales themselves as some other folks are. So that's where Jason steps in. And as the evolution has kept going, it's been every time we get to a breaking point within the company, it's taking a step back and saying again, What's the next level? What's left on my plate that I can hand off to somebody else and enable, to, enable them, give them the power and the authority to take that and play to their strengths? And then my job becomes helping everybody play to their strengths at a really high level. How do you know when you have the right person in that seat? Uh, honestly, I think that that's one of the areas that I still sometimes make some mistakes on. And I think that there is an artistry to hiring and part of it, it really comes down to not just the person, but the culture that we're hiring them into. And I can look back over the history of the company and I'm sure many people can, and they can assess out that maybe they're not in the place that they were two years ago, but they're not in the place where they wanna be. Or, you know, understanding, I can look at some folks that we've hired, inside sales would be a great example within the company. And it was an evolution to get the inside sales department to where it is today. And I can look back at some of the hires that we had made very early on in the inside sales department development. And some of those people were insanely talented. And I think that they were would have been the right person if the company, if it was then what it is today, both from a culture perspective, from the building out of it and getting it to the right area, um, and enabling them to succeed. So I think some of it is understanding that there's an artistry to making sure that you're hiring in the right areas. There's an artistry to being able to suss out what somebody's true strengths are versus what they're saying their true strengths are. And then there's the, the dynamic of putting them in place into your company and understanding do their strengths and their personality fit within the role that's needed. and. You know, looking at an operations role, for example, right? Somebody could be a really strong operator in one area, but the area of operations that you need in your company could be slightly different than, the, than what their true strength really is. So I think that uh, most business owners, I think we're we're kidding ourselves if we're not willing to admit that we've all made mistakes, whether it's understanding our own strengths and weaknesses, whether it's identifying the strengths and weaknesses of those around us, or being able to coach and mentor and guide people to working within their strengths and starting to avoid their weak areas. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that I see team owners and other business owners make is thinking that they can do it all um, and thinking that there's a way where long-term they can do it all. And usually the reason is financial, that they want to save the money or honestly that they just don't have the revenues that they need yet in order to make the caliber of hire of person that they need to really kind of offset that, right? And I think one of the things that we always say here when we're making a decision is, that we're not hiring the person that we hire with the strengths for the position that it is today. We want the person to have the strengths for the position as we see it 24 months from now, 36 months from now, um, so that 
they're able to take the position in their role and grow it and keep growing with it, if that makes sense. Everybody has weaknesses, right? There's no person, and I don't think anybody would ever raise their hand and say, I have no weaknesses. But I do think that we can always offset, right? And I think what it comes down to is, 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 is your desire to succeed enough to force you so far outside your comfort zone and outside your day to day that you're willing to do whatever it takes to offset that weakness, right? So I didn't love selling. I was not passionate about selling. I'm not, you know, I'm not a natural people person, right? But my desire to succeed in selling far exceeded my perceived weaknesses in sales. And so I was able and willing to do whatever it took to understand sales and sales psychology and skills, sales scripting and all of the stuff that went into that. I think we'd look at it and say that I had a fairly successful sales career, even though it's probably not one of my strengths. So yeah, I think, would, it, would somebody ever be able to live there long term playing in their weak areas? Probably not happily, but can we all work in our weaknesses for a short term? I think so.